So I, I walked into that forest in my moment of being very disillusioned. And I asked the Lord to just kill me right there. Just strike mm. me down because my heart was, was so filled with lusts and fleshly desires and that I, my heart despised you, Lord, my Lord, I despise you. So please strike me down so that I don't sin against you any longer. Hey everybody, welcome to Contra Talk. My name is Richard Henry, and my special guest guest today is John Luke Giddings. Uh, he's a friend we met last year, and he's out in California. Welcome, John Luke. How you doing, brother? Doing just fine. Uh, thank you, Richard. Uh, yeah. Glad to actually finally see you after a long while. Yeah, it's been. I know you had a you moved out here to K- Kentucky, and then uh, moved back to California, and you found a good church there. You were part of a a solid church here, it sounded like, um, and just, we're going to talk about your testimony. We're going to talk about uh, how Christ saved you, and and yet you had knowledge before, and of course people click on thumbnails, says he used to be gay, so we're going to be talking about that, sexuality, and the other things, so if maybe younger children are listening, maybe be aware of that for the audience. Um, but yeah, last year we met, you were waiting tables, and it was at Cracker Barrel, it's one of our favorite places, although a little less so. They've kind of gone woke these days, which is sad. But uh, I remember you were so attentive. And um, I know you had been, hadn't been there that long. Um, you just moved to the area and, and everything else. And we were actually, it's, you know, again, Providence. We were going to go to a different Cracker Barrel altogether. There's kind of, we're between two, about 45 minutes. And the other one was about an hour almost. And we we're like, well... But we'll go here, but that one's in Eastern time zone. Yeah, I guess yep. we'll go there because it's it's a little bit closer, which was the one that you worked at. And, uh, you know, the rest is history, as they say. But you, you again, you were very um, attentive and hospitable. And I know there was a little mix up with the food and you were like, oh, no problem. Here you go. And, you know, we got some food for free. And, and then I had some coupons and I handed you the, the, the cash because I used to wait tables. I waited tables for years and. You know, it was always nice. I want to make sure people get their tip. And if you're a good server, you get a good tip, uh, at least in my book. And yeah, I you had just, I don't know, you had said something that you had just moved here and where you were from California and then you were going to the church, you were going to a church in the area and you had kind of a spiritual awakening, I think is kind of how you phrased it. And so I probed a little bit and asked a little bit and, um, uh, and then you ended up visiting the church and gave your testimony. It was a brief testimony uh, at the end of service uh, a couple months later, a month or so later. And yeah, we've just kept in touch. And now you're back in California. Uh, why don't you just kind of tell people who you are and what brought you to Kentucky? And you can kind of jump around a little bit if you like, uh, bounce around if you want. Um, and, you know, you don't need to be uh, G rated, but we also don't need to be X rated either. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, let me give, pass it over to you and just kind of tell the audience a little bit who you are and the grace of God in Christ and how he reconciles sinners to himself. I was, uh, born and raised in California, uh, and shortly after high school, I immediately went into college, did, a uh, did about a year and then I was bored of it and joined the military. And that's where my crusade of uh, living a homosexual life really uh, came forth from that. Uh, and for the next eight years, which is eight years is where how, how long I uh, spent in the military. And then I, I cut it short, uh, despite not going the full 20 years. Uh, during those eight years, I... Yeah, I had lived a life of sin. However, I was raised in a Catholic, uh, going back just a little bit, I was raised in a Catholic household. My father was his, uh, a non-denominational Christian. However, he has told me directly that he just wants to know the bare minimum of Jesus Christ 
because early on in his childhood, from his perspective, that the deeper you know, have a knowledge of Jesus Christ, the greater the consequences are for that knowledge. Uh, and because of that, uh, he has just a very shallow uh, belief in... Uh, but the greater the or, riches, too. Yeah, the greater, the greater the riches of Christ, yeah. though. But anyway, go on. Yeah, exactly, right? Uh, and I, it comes to that verse, uh, my people die for lack of knowledge. And uh, uh, anyways, so my, my, my mother, she was the one that took us to to catechism and all that. And uh, however, when I finally grew up to adulthood uh, and shortly after joining the military, I became disillusioned because I was trying to follow Catholicism and I got very distracted by both the language as well as the application of the saints in our prayers, as well as the deification of Mary and uh, I, I didn't like it at all. So I became non-denominational non-denominational Christian for the longest time. So this might in, uh, uh, incense your audience that, okay, so this person's talking about he knew Christ, yet he was committing homosexual acts. And uh, that is the power of short-sightedness. Uh, I, I knew... Uh, as early as when I was at in, at age ten, I know I keep jumping around this time time. No, no, here. that's you're totally fine. Uh, uh, age ten, I opened up. I remember opening up my Bible and going to Leviticus and seeing, "Thou shall not lie with mankind as with womankind; it is an abomination." And although I was a little saddened about it, I was actually I was very young then. I was glad that it just doesn't say immediately you know they're going to go to hell i just mm. thought okay abomination is not that bad of a word but it's <laughs> just this it was just this uh it was this bartering almost with with sin like okay i i can, I can do just a little bit of this i'm not going all the mm. way with it but if i could just do a little bit of this and indulge a little bit of the sin and that was, and that happened a lot uh, throughout my younger years before reaching adulthood, and and that consumed me uh, later on in life is by allowing and and to just uh, to not treat as as sin as such a bad thing. Mm. However, I would also have a guilty conscience, and I would always ask God for. Uh, for mercy and uh, do, and I, I would apologize for my sins. Uh, and, but this would come out sporadically. It, it wasn't, it, it was like a, a kid on, on, a tr on his training wheels, but without training wheels on a bike for his first time, mm. I would, and I would constantly make falls uh, with my relationship with God. Cause I, I wouldn't read the Bible. Uh, I was a shallow Christian, just like my father. And so I was very wishy-washy, but I would always keep a Bible with me. And just sometimes I would have the urge to just read random points within the Bible. So I'd always have that connection. That's that short connection with the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyways, going back to the military, uh, it was in Korea when it, it started picking up. That was my first duty station. And I was always, I've always been into Asians uh, for some reason. And, uh, and so that was my, my playing field. And, uh, and yeah, I, I commit several shameful acts that I, I would, I wouldn't want to get too much into detail with, but uh, all throughout my life, uh, looking back, there was many moments where I know that I have angered Christ and that I have grieved the Holy spirit. And, uh, so I'm, I'm very thankful that I have, I, I feel that I've been saved and, and why that is, is because after the military and after all that sin, uh, 
getting out of the military, I was able to just take a breath and be able to collect my thoughts. And that's where it led me to Kentucky as well is I wanted to separate from family and I wanted to, I, I dedicated myself to seeking out God. Mm. And that's when I, and when I was in Vine Grove, Kentucky, a little small town, and I started going to Cracker Barrel, uh, I began uh, figuring out, uh, reading a lot in the Bible, as well as trying to discover what the Holy Spirit was. I, I, I realized something in my head thought, what is the Holy Spirit and what is his role in our relationship with Christ? Why don't I just go to Christ only? Because that's what the father wants us to go to is always go to Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's when Billy Graham opened my eyes up in uh, Billy Graham's the Holy Spirit. And it was that fateful night in October when it was the middle of October when I was, uh, in the, like the second or third chapter of Billy Graham's The Holy Spirit. And it was just, just revelation on top of revelation of, oh my goodness. Mm. Oh wow. my That's goodness good. of what have I done? Like mm. it, it was, it compounded the, the grief that I had and the shame that I had of what I, I did and wantonly just kept, thinking oh god's just gonna forgive this god's gonna forgive this and that's when i i got on my knees in the bathroom and i laid my arms on the uh the uh, the bathtub uh wall and i just i started praying to christ and asking christ to please have mercy that i have grieved the holy spirit and and mm. that i would i apologize to the holy spirit and i I, I kept praying in that sort of way. And that's when it happened when I had that encounter with the Holy spirit mm. where uh, it was like this, for me, it felt like this dark cloud just went away. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it felt like there's like something over my head that just was taken away. And it felt like just a dark cloud. And it just, I could, I felt so clear. And then that clarity followed with joy yeah and i was i was so happy right then then and there and i just i wanted to celebrate and it was nighttime and i wanted to to walk outside and shout and and shout uh you know praise be to the lord jesus christ mm -hmm. uh and i i wanted to go crazy for some reason i, I felt crazy because i i wanted to tell someone that up what I was feeling. Yeah. And two things happened. Uh, one that joy didn't go away for about a month. And two, huh. I, I, I felt hungry, like scripture hungry. I felt like I, I needed to abide in the word. I needed to read the word constantly. And uh, I guess a third thing was I felt as if time was short mm. that, that, I that every moment uh, in my life mattered and that I needed to get on top of my game with catching up with uh, my knowledge of Jesus Christ, but also doing work for Jesus Christ. Yeah. And uh, that's what what prevailed me for for over the next couple months. Uh, however, uh, I began stumbling again because what then the devil did was to preoccupy me with finances mm. and also uh, my work as well. Because as you know, Cracker Barrel and serving at Cracker Barrel or serving in general is very stressful. Yeah. And me being a people pleaser, I naturally, I get it from my father, <laughs> bless him, uh, that a person's whims and attitudes are, all, are always something that I want to try to please. Mm -hmm. And, and the Lord also, I mean, it says, and also in the Bible to, to not be a people pleaser and to fear, fear God first and foremost. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, that, that caused me to, uh, stumble, uh, quite a few times in my, uh, after being saved, 
Yeah. So uh, anyways, I'll, I'll let you go on with a question. No, that's no, that's good. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. Uh, I mean, praise God. I mean, and everybody has different yeah. testimonies and sometimes you, sometimes you don't really see the forest and the trees until you're a little bit further out um, and you don't understand really what's going on until oh uh, oh it was this but what you always like for you there's there's still always a engagement now you hear about the stories of the person who here gets the dream and whatever but then there's still seemingly and of course i'm not omniscient nobody is but the lord right but you know there's still like this like well but the, they they had to find a missionary or they read the bible or there's some other things that seem to be seems how the lord works it out you know you hear the gospel at church over and over again and finally it clicks or somebody passes you know gives you that fifth gospel tract and finally you're like oh i am a wicked sinner i can't believe it you know i need christ you know or just the backlog of information that you memorize verses as a kid over and over and over again until you're in college and you're you know high and drunk off your behind and all of a sudden you just realize how terrible your life is and how glorious jesus yeah. is you know and, and any any other mix i mean i you know i always encourage people to drop comments and if you know people want to share their testimony or brief how the lord saves them it's always i always love hearing testimonies uh because they're all different and yeah uh, all of them and the one thing that i think a lot of people sometimes sometimes we can get mystical or or it is a supernatural act yes but then there's this but our side is you still need to repent and believe and there's and the word repentance yes. isn't isn't just this whimsical couch potato y word that's this passive. It's rather this active, but it's this mental turning. Now it doesn't it's not just, oh yeah, I understand it's an abomination. I understand I shouldn't lie, I shouldn't cheat, I shouldn't covet, I shouldn't do these things. Okay, I got it. But then it's this action of not doing this and then understanding, oh, I'm sinning against my creator. Oh, I've sinned against people. Oh, I've sinned against myself. Oh, wow. You know, and then there's this, then there's this yeah. grief that also works on it as well. But sometimes people get too either rudimentary and you're saved by your works of not doing it, which, you know, is, is a very big problem. Or people just kind of like couch potato y, like, well, you know, if God wants to save me, he'll save me, whatever. And it's like, ah, yeah, that's not really how it works. Uh, it's, a, it's a both and sort of thing. So I appreciate you. I am up. so glad you brought that up because yeah, uh, being finally dedicating myself to not being just a shallow Christian, I was falling into that mentality. Mm. Uh, there were two, uh, very fatal, uh, I guess for lack of word fallacies that I, I fell into was that I, I wanted, I thought that my works is what was important from then on. Mm -hmm. Uh, now that I was, I felt that I was saved. And that's wrong. Mm -hmm. And the second one was, I was thinking that I, I fooled myself into thinking that, okay, he has saved, he has forgiven all my past sins. So any sins that are coming out now are really bad for me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why I fell into that. And so, so keeping in tune with the word, but also with, uh, pastors like you, Richard and, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, he's also part of Grace uh, Grace Church, Grace to You Ministries. Oh, MacArthur. Um, I, uh, uh, MacArthur, uh, MacArthur? Is that his name? Yeah, oh, John MacArthur. MacArthur. Yeah. John Main, MacArthur. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and he, where they're they're really on the on the nail, and uh, also mm -hmm. conservative Christians, and uh, so that that was that would that it was really helpful however me being distracted with work uh, here comes the excuses i know but <laughs> me being distracted with work and finances uh when i lost my vehicle because of the tornado on december 11th in kentucky um uh, that that train wrecked me with uh going to cracker barrel and working there so i decided yeah, to work right. at valero yeah yeah and so i i started working at valero and there i just i never had time for for sunday's church anymore and i didn't have time for anything because it was 12 on 12 off because there's only two of us there oh wow and yeah, and that yeah was i remember really you bad. were having 
you were you said you were just exhausted every time I was like texting you. It's just like, man, yeah, that, that yep. sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah, like, and and because Satan had me pinned down there, uh, I I stood no chance with uh, almost nearly falling back into old old habits, and mm-hmm. uh, so it it shows that just because we have a uh, uh, an interaction with the Holy Spirit, it's still up to us to take that as a respite and then go further th- with that with Jesus Christ. We 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 need to do our due diligence, as you say, and to delve in deep and to and put our heels in so that we can prepare ourselves for the next attack or to avoid turning around and going back to where we were yeah. we once were before Jesus pulled us out of the mire. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely, uh, it can be tricky, uh, for, for, for probably all of us really, but in the sense that we are called to walk in holiness, we are called to, um, walk by the spirit. So we will not carry out the desires of the flesh for the, desires of the flesh are evident greed you know malice you know envy drunkenness you know all these things i mean there's multiple lists and so sometimes you know if you get too theological then it's like well you're trying to keep yourself because obviously the scripture is clear you know you're saved by grace but you're kept by works well no that's an, that's wrong too so it's not so much your yeah. being saved or kept be from you know condemnation or something but rather you are my affections are now changed and now, and I have said this before, I do things for my wife, take out the trash. You know, there's a loud noise. There was a random bug flying around a room a couple nights ago and she woke me up. It was like 5 a.m. You know, but it was enough and annoying. Like, what is that? You know, and of course I'm getting up doing it because I'm the dude. This is what dudes do. Do I want to get up out of bed? It's nice and warm. But like I do these things because she's my wife. I'm called to protect her. I'm called to love her. I'm called to serve her. In, in the ways that the Lord calls me, but I don't ever do these things. So she won't divorce me, right? If we're doing these things, so God won't strike us down. That's the wrong approach. We should do these things because we love and behold Christ. And that's the thing that you, you need to turn it. And so many Christians, we need to turn it on our head and, and realize our affections are now changed. Our desires, um, you know, again, Paul says, walk by the spirit. So you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. He doesn't make these caveats of like, well, you guys probably aren't really Christians or you're not really saved or you're not. No, he's talking to the church. I mean, all the letters are written to the church. And yet, you know, the Corinthian church, the Galatian uh, church and uh, the churches in Ephesus, right? John's writing the churches. You know, I pray that you don't sin, but when you do sin, you have an advocate with the father. I mean, on and on and on and on. Like it's, but we, we sometimes pendulum swing depending on how deep into theology and other things we are or how long we've been saved. And sometimes we think our works don't matter, quote unquote, or our works matter too much, which, you know, both both are false, <laughs> but also true. It's very it's yeah. a balance, right, because we're, we're walking. We're called to walk. It's not a Christian sit. Oh, it's a Christian walk. <laughs> so um, you mentioned is. You mentioned before, um, when you were here in Kentucky, we were talking a little bit before we started recording, uh, talk about the Presbyterian church. I, I'd love to hear this a little bit more and just kind of give some people the idea of, um, again, your background is pra- practicing homosexuality and, and knowing that was a sin. So I want to first, first we'll talk about the Presbyterian church and the pastor's wife. And then we'll we'll jump around a little bit more. So tell tell us about that interaction. Okay, um, when I first got to Kentucky, I was desperately searching out for a church, and I uh, so I I started ten or I did online searching, and I came up with a Presbyterian Church. I, I typed. I was looking for a Presbyterian Church first because uh, in my military years, I. In Georgia specifically, there was a, um, a New Covenant Christian, uh, New Covenant Presbyterian Church, and uh, that's a name I'll just put put out there as a plug because that yep. was an awesome church that was just all about just the Bible, just the Bible, mm. just the Bible, and uh, 
so I was desiring for that same one. Found one in Kentucky, uh, in in Vine Grove, and uh, that uh, church I attended. I I walked all the way there um, because my goods and my goods have not hadn't arrived there yet, mm-hmm. and so uh, having no vehicle or anything like that, uh, and on my first week there, I think it was. Uh, so walk there. And it was a completely elderly church Mm -hmm. and they only had about 15 members strong. I think it was, Mm -hmm. and they were all elderly. And, uh, when they saw me all hot and sweaty, uh, I was in like (laughs) a suit as well. Yeah. And, uh, they, they were very happy to have me and they, they wanted to also involve me with their church, their church. And, uh, I was, I was kind of pleased, but I was also just a a little bit disappointed. And when I listened to, uh, the sermons, it was, it was uh, a good, it was a feel good message, uh, is what I could just get, get from that. Uh, the, the scriptures that chose were of the old Testament, but it just didn't, yeah, it just didn't really connect with me as like, okay, that's very prevalent. And that that really does, uh, that message does reveal the Lord's word uh, that I need to abide by in my, in my daily life. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyhow, uh, because I established that relationship, I I leaned on them because I wanted to have eye surgery done. And uh, so I went to uh, LASIK eye surgery. I needed a, a ride to LASIK eye surgery because uh, when I would have the uh, surgery that I couldn't drive, obviously. So that right. was that sure. was my yeah. thinking about that. So they relied on they, they showed me to the pastor's wife and this pastor's wife was very pleasant lady. And I don't know what came of it, but she we began talking about politics and there was about we had about five rides together Mm -hmm. uh the first ride was nice introductions we're talking about the weather and everything and then it was around the near the end of it where we started talking about uh blacks and whites in kentucky Mm. and uh how she was very uh, pro blm and uh, she was talking about the current events that were occurring. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess there were protests or something like that in Louisville. Yeah. So then the yeah. second ride came came about with she wanted to talk more about that. And I was indicating to her that Christianity shouldn't have to involve itself with politics. And we should also just have, a, uh, what do you call it, to basically produce the fruits of the spirit rather than the strife that politics has. Mm -hmm. And we somehow went on to talk about the Bible and she was adamant that the Bible was a misinterpretation was misinterpreted. Of course. And that it was fallible because uh, she didn't believe that uh, some of the saying that it had, uh, she felt that uh, there were misogynist tones to it, meaning that it was very patriarchal, mm-hmm. and that it, it is. Was not, I mean, it is. It was, <laughs> but go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then that's but not in a, a bad very thing. negative <laughs> way, such as right, right, right. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, what do you call when men are aggressive and venomous? What do you call it? Poison, poisonous testosterone, or something like that? I, I forget. Oh, it. toxic masculinity. But, that's, Tox- that's the toxic masculinity. Toxic, toxic masculinity. That's she the was... current. We're going to talk about toxic exactly. femininity. We can talk about that all day long. Anyway, go on. We go. But, <laughs> but the point was was that uh, she she had a very flawed view for being a pastor's wife, mm. and she did indicate to me with her own words that she was why she was interested because I finally elated saying like I just don't really want to talk about this with you anymore because it was getting to the point where I'm blind I'm relying on her for travel and for caring for me and she's becoming we're, we're going head to head 
felt every single topic because it was me trying to abide by scripture as well as abide to being on the conservative side. And mm -hmm. she was on the far, far left. And uh, she, yeah, she, she got to be very aggressive, but we always ended politely at, at, at the end of our, our very uh, energetic discussions. Mm. I would have to say their arguments. Yeah. Um, and, Overall, it was a good reflection of why their church was the way it was, possibly, because they they had a bad shepherd, possibly. Because yeah. if if oh for sure if the pastor huh. did not disagree with this woman's remarks, what she thought about the Bible, what she thought about uh, men, and what she thought about whites in general being because she felt that whites were inherently racist. Mm -hmm. uh, she was white, of course, too, these, right? Yes, yeah, she was Caucasian. Yeah, of course. She was. And uh, so it's, it's interesting to see that, okay, this woman who calls herself a Christian, who thinks that homosexuals belong in God's kingdom, and which she did, she believed that, and she didn't know my testimony back then. Uh, she did not know my testimony. I was too mm. new to the church and I never did provide my testimony to her that I. And so when she, she said that Christ would accept and, and Christ was so loving, so accepting of the world that he would extend his arms to people, to a lifestyle that is completely contrary to how God created us. Uh, and yeah, she was, she was definitely in the wrong, just mm. wrong. And how and, old uh, was she? I'm curious. How, how, like how old she was? She was in her sixties. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of, uh, kind of yeah. Okay. She was, she was in her sixties. Wow. So, and she and had, her yeah, husband she had, was around the same age. Okay. But she, and she had mentioned, I think you said it earlier before, before we started that, she kept pressing you and was asking you, do you accept this? Do you believe this? Because in my household, right? Did she use those types of words? Is that what you said? I'm remembering correctly. Everybody agrees. Yeah. With me. Yeah. Is that she what you said. Yeah. She, she says, yeah, everyone agrees with me and we don't have any arguments at the house because we're all of the same mind. That wow. was, that was her, her input. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about but, it. Now that's, that's perfect toxic femininity but of course you know the culture we don't want to talk about you know women and even in the church a lot of times we we yeah. pretend like women don't sin or something uh which is just silliness, she, but at the, and what what was sad was that i i because i just felt i at the last ride she had to give to me uh of going down to louisville and, and then back uh i just i just let it her know that I don't think I'm the right person to go to your church. And she said, that is totally fine. We, we also do not think you're the right person for our church. <laughs> uh, Cause we're, we're trying to go into a direction where we're very accepting of, of many more people or wider audience. Mm. So she, wow. yeah, she cast me out. <laughs> so, wow. so, so did you, was that uh, it? Like after that, like right on Friday or whatever, like you weren't there the next Sunday, basically. Yeah, that was okay. that was it. Uh, I was I wasn't there anymore on Sundays, and I I stayed away. Yeah. yeah. How long did you go there for? Uh, I'm just, just curious. Uh, so it was only for a couple weeks, and that's okay. that's because I I kept trying to go to their church, but one member got COVID nineteen, so they shut down the church, and that was oh, because dear. that was the pastor pressing that, and. And because they were afraid of COVID-19. So one member got COVID. And so it was shut down for almost a month. And, and so I only was able to get in like two sessions. Wow. When I could have gotten four or five. Yeah. Uh, at their well, church. it's probably so, for the best, John Luke. It's probably for the best. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It My was, goodness. So. But, yeah. but, but to think that 
an omnipotent God that you sick, you claim that you believe mm. that, that you have devoted your, your husband devoted his life to that. His word is infallible or not fallible, but fallible. Mm. And that, that his, his word today is wrong because of man's because of man because of man's interpretation of it or translation of it disregarding all of the scholarly work that's been done to verify that the texts are concise and that they are translated well disregarding all that it's just pure short-sightedness it's short-sightedness mm -hmm. that is is only akin to satan's work yeah that's yeah. that's satan putting on the blinders on a person yeah because i can't i uh, time and time again uh the word of god has 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 been tested over and over and uh yeah it's 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 it is infallible and yeah. we have to adhere to it uh to to just uh, to just uh, write it off as oh it's it, we can disregard some of it because the moment you start disregarding some of the Lord's word uh, is when we run into problems uh, so it's yeah. just yeah no man it's just yeah uh, it it angers that's, me that's all that's good and it will and it should I mean yeah. ultimately it should because um, I mean and, and you're and you're completely correct that once you once you leave the door open for one little thing there's another little thing just yeah. just shortly away and then it becomes that much easier i mean it's the same thing with yeah. any other type of sin or 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 uh you know eating unhealthy i mean we all we all binge and uh, sometimes have some of us have worse problems with food than others but you know if you eat junk it's that much easier to eat more junk you know you eat mcdonald's you're like well i just ate it i guess i'll have it again it's kind of good you know or whatever and so you kind of go yeah. through, not to say McDonald's is completely simple, but it's close. Uh, <laughs> that's my nutritionist coming up. But um, and Richard's a legalist. He said fast food. No. Um, anyway, it, it, it's it's true, though. You leave you leave this saying, well, I'm not really sure about that and this and this and that. And then, yeah, the Old Testament. And well, yeah, 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 you know, and then you just you basically chop up the Bible and you have you know, some pleasant verses in certain passages from Jesus, you know, yeah. and that's, and that's where you have most uh, leftist liberal Christianity. That's really another religion. Um, I, I've said it before. I don't know of if you've read the book. Yeah. Um, uh, Jay Gresham Machen. I don't know if I have it here. Um, he's, he wrote a book, Presbyterian uh, from over a hundred years mm -hmm. ago. He's long, he's long gone. Uh, he's in glory, but he wrote a book called Christianity and liberalism. And it's, fabulous I, I commend it to anybody including you if you've not read it christianity and liberalism because they're really two different religions and we are seeing again i've got a friend he calls um woke christianity just it's it's a cult and i don't think we're seeing mm -hmm. quite all the outworkings yet because usually cults always start you know they're like a cancer and they start and they grow small and then they and then they infect bigger areas uh, so probably when we're older, I would imagine there will be physically woke churches that are like outwardly and advertising in the sense that we are woke. You know, they already see it with some with the rainbow flags and so on. Uh, but even more so, not just with the homosexual stuff and all the alphabet stuff, but um, race, you know, and, and, and critical theory and really being hitting that on the head. So anyway. I'm not a son of a prophet, yep, but just, I think that's probably going to yeah, happen. So. Things that just divide the flock. That's that's all that, that narrative is all about, is just dividing the flock, divide the flock, divide the flock. Yeah. Uh, especially sure. with that, the, the race, uh, any sort of political race talk. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah. Um, uh, concerning blacks, whites, Hispanics, whichever. Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, so I, I know that this month has been overshadowed by uh, Roe v. Wade, but it's, I know it's supposed to be pride month and everything, but uh, uh, gosh, I wanted to say something about uh, the uh, homosexuality in general is yeah, go for it's, it. it's very, uh, it's, it, it's a lifestyle that 
I think uh, John MacArthur said it best is that homosexuality is lust unchecked. Mm. And that's and I think I have to agree with that statement is that it is lust unchecked because now that I have I'm here back in California and I'm glad uh, I, I returned back to California with my head low, but um, I, I brought my head back up high because I found a church because I, I, I was coming to California thinking, OK, I'm going to be back in my family's house and the same temptations of uh, are going to just come back is what I was mm -hmm. afraid of. And then I'm not going to find a good church and and I'm just going to become lost. But it, the things that I was looking for in Kentucky, which was a, a family as well as a church, as well as a fellowship, I was unable to find it uh, there in my area, local area in Vine Grove, because of the not dying churches. There was a lot of elderly uh, in mm. a lot of the churches that I went to, but uh I'm sorry, got got off topic, but all that I was looking for in Kentucky, I found here in California. My mm. family was here, and That's that cool. helped because I don't have to. That took away my uh, my fear of finances, and focus on finances. So that took one game out of Satan's hand, and the second was a fellowship. I do have a fellowship here. Is that like course, a community like, group sort of thing as well? You're saying it's. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's Tuesdays and Wednesdays. They have just just men. Uh, it's just oh, okay. men's Bible yeah. study, and, yeah, it, and it's great. to help the men. Yeah, to to develop as Christian men and how important that is. And it's men about my age, uh, late thirties or early forties, and uh, I guess the oldest gentleman that we have is in his fifties. So great demographic. So very healthy live church. Uh, lively church. Uh, sorry for the plug. Is, is what I'm just trying to indicate is, I'll put their is website. that uh, how uh, right how much I my spirit needed that. And oh, absolutely. Much, much my spirit within me that resides in me to grow and to develop as a Christian. Yeah, uh, so important. And I'm also working just 40 hours uh, a week here, not the 70 hours or 80 hours that I was working Ooh. over there. Uh, so, so nice. spiritual health is, is great. And I hope to develop much further. It's almost been a year now since I've been saved. Uh, and I will call it that I will call it being saved. Uh, despite there can be some conflicts with some Christians saying that just because you have an interaction with the Holy spirit doesn't mean that you're saved. And that, and I can agree with them with that. Uh, yeah. At first I was, I was heart stricken about that and it kind of threw me off my game. Uh, it, it took a brother at uh, a brother in Christ in uh, my men's Bible study to tell me that uh, because that's what I was fixing all my hopes and dreams on was that I am saved because of that moment I experienced in October in Kentucky. Uh, but later developing uh, a more uh, later developing, I, I can understand that perspective because uh, if I could, do you want me to, is it okay if I read a case for Christ? Yeah. Uh, yeah no, a ahead. case for faith Absolutely. by Lee Strobel. The whole book. It's just in the introduction. Oh, I'm just kidding. Right. There you go. <laughs> uh there was a man, uh, just for a backstory to the uh, the audience, if they're still listening, uh, they better the, be. There's a there's a man uh, there's a man called uh, Charles Templeton that was a good friend of Billy Graham. Uh, he came to Christ, became a minister, and then a doubt grew in with within him that grew to be overwhelming in his life. Uh, that academia, and the thought was. And the doubt was, was that academia is greater than Jesus Christ and the Bible, that knowledge would overpower God and that we don't need God anymore because of knowledge. Yet he had this very specific moment that could relate to uh, a lot of Christians uh, who a lot of Christians walk with Christ. And here I'm just going to begin. Slowly, a weight began to lift. A weight as heavy as I. It passed through my thighs, my torso, my arms, and shoulders, and lifted off. An ineffable warmth began to suffuse my body. 
It seemed that a light had turned on in my chest and that it had cleansed me. I hardly dared to breathe, fearing that I might alter or end the moment. And I hear, and I heard myself whispering softly over and over again, thank you, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. Later in bed, I lay quietly at the center of, my, of a radiant, overwhelming, all-pervasive happiness. And this is his, was his experience during prayer, asking the Lord to just come down. Mm -hmm. And I would say that this is an interaction with the Holy Spirit that Charles Templeton did have. And these were Charles Templeton's words that I just read. Yeah. And for him to have that experience, yet go about and completely at the end of his life, abhor God, but also despise his word and try to turn everyone away to the point of also causing doubt in, in Billy Graham before mm. Billy Graham had his, his tree stump prayer, his famous tree stump prayer, where that's where he turned to God and said, uh, Lord, I may not know everything, but I will faithfully abide in this word that is given to us in this book. Mm. And so uh, that indicates that just because the Holy Spirit interacts with us in that very moment in our Christian life, that yes, that does not indicate safe, uh, salvation, but that also does also, and this is where you come in with your expertise, sir, of, you know, that's where we do our half, correct? Or not to sound works-based, but yeah. to to indicate that we uh, our, our our walk is just beginning <laughs> from there. We, yeah. we need to continue that and, and and go forward. So, well, the, anyway, the question is always: I mean, Romans is Romans, right? It's such a fabulous book, um, and right there in the middle of the kind of more contentious chapters, at least for Psalm 9, 10, and 11, is chapter 10. And he says, what does it say? The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved for the scripture says quoting the old testament right so this is god's word we see god quoting his word again back to believers or the reader everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame for there is no distinction between jew and greek for the same lord is lord of all bestowing his riches on all who call on him for everyone who calls on the name of the lord will be saved and so he's quoting right we, and sometimes again with more liberal churches or just kind of unbelievers in general, um, you know, they think, well, the Old Testament's a bunch of works or it's a bunch of curmudgeon old whatever. Or it's the fuddy-duddy, you know, Old Testament God. We want the Jesus, cool hipster Jesus with the hacky sack and the tie-dye shirt and, you know, the baggy shorts and, you know, the cool loving Jesus. And it's like, but did you read what, did you see what this said? Like, if you confess with your mouth and and notice there isn't this, mystical thing or this sitting down thing or this you have to earn it thing or any of that it's with one with the heart one believes and is justified we're justified people talk about justice all the time and uh oh, justice and climate justice and race justice and no just justice <laughs> we're sinned against a holy yeah. god but he is gracious enough to pay for that sin through his son and we are justified in his sight simply by belief, which isn't works. It isn't. And there isn't this abiding uh, uh, because, like I said earlier, with, you know, trying to keep yourself saved or anything like that. But there's this really, are you walking in the spirit? Right. Are you are you manifesting the flesh or the, uh, the flesh or the spirit? Are you walking in these ways? Um I know many people know Paul Washer, know Paul, know of Paul Washer, and there's just a clip I saw. I think it was last night, and he said, and he's like, "Don't basically don't look back to something, walk the aisle, dot the i, cross the t, you know, this whole thing. We're an experience, but rather, are you walking in faith? Are you walking with Christ now through His Spirit? 
Um, because that's really, that's really it. You know, I think a lot of people kind of get muddy and think one way or the other with certain things. And, you know, they're trusting that duty or that act or that experience and they may be great experiences. Yeah. You made it, it. I'm not doubting it at all. But at the same time, like you're saying, uh, and that's good that you're seeing that, especially, you know, early on in your walk. I mean, trust me, it it takes a lot <laughs> in one sense it, it, or uh, not a lot, but it it's it's can be overwhelming. And then you realize, you know, things as you go and how wicked of a sinner you were and how this and that. But God reveals certain things and gives you what you need for that moment. And I love the phrase, you know, he meets you where you are, not where you should be. Um, and that's so true. You know, so 10 years from now, you'll look back at this and think, wow. You know, and then 10 years after that, you'll look back at that point and think, wow. You know, and and yet the world might look at you or me or others listening and, oh, you guys are just a bunch of goody two-shoes. Like, you, you're so, you're, what are you talking about? You're a bad person. What are you talking about? You're a sinner. What do you, I mean, you love your kids. You do this, you do this. You, you know, you work hard, blah, blah, blah. And yet we know in our heart, the longer you walk with the Lord, the more sinful your sin is and how much greater he is uh, and how much more magnificent and wonderful our Lord is. And anyway, I can go on now. I'm preaching, but um no, it's okay. It's what I do. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. No, I, I 100% agree. Uh, I, when I realized uh, in the month of October, and I still realize uh, that how much sin that he had, he had just put away mm -hmm. and how much sin that he had covered where I was, I am so de deserving of death. It, it, I, I had nothing to do, but to just cry tears of happiness. There were, mm -hmm. there are moments in, in my uh, time there in Kentucky where I was sitting alone in bed and I would just, uh, not sitting alone, but I would wake up and I'd immediately start crying because I would be so thankful for uh, the Lord having covered my sin Mm -hmm. because to to how fortunate am i to have read scripture and yet still uh continued to sin proceeded to sin yeah despite having knowledge of of the lord having knowledge of jesus christ and yet still having that short-sightedness of 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 the flesh dominating the any sort of spirit that I had, uh, spiritual strength that I had, yeah. and and to continue that lifestyle, and yet here we are at age thirty, uh, now thirty one. That's because that's how age works. Uh, <laughs> age thirty, when in Kentucky, that he he decides that to have that interaction with the Holy Spirit and and yeah to take take away uh, take it all away yeah and that's uh it it still flabbergasts me uh not flabbergasts but you know keeps me uh speechless um yeah oh gosh what other point did i want to make he concerning again concerning homosexuality it being uh just unhinged lust to recover from that is very very uphill battle but mm -hmm. uh once i've encountered once i encounter the the holy spirit it uh I, I can feel a different strength that i didn't have before it if mm -hmm. that makes any sense whatsoever yeah i feel like i was using a fleshly will the times where i felt guilty because of my homosexuality and felt guilty because i was i was a uh, living a homosexual lifestyle or seeking out other men. There was a fleshly will to, to stop me from doing that. I would like delete apps off my phone from dating other men, or I would just, uh, I, I would do things that were just very temporary. I would always succumb to them. I would always succumb mm -hmm. to my, to my fleshly desires of fulfilling my lust. And 
th- that was all put away uh, after October. Yeah. And that kind wow. of that spiritual strength still resides with me now. And I can't really describe it. I, I wish I wish I couldn't just say like it was I wish I could be very scientific with my explanation, but I can't. Mm. It's it's this strength that I didn't have now that I didn't have then that I have now. And uh, it's I can always rely on that. And I always do. I, I always put myself into that position whenever I need strength, whenever I need uh, protection. And I guess that's a submitting, sub- submitting myself to the Holy spirit or to the strength of the Lord versus what I used to do of just relying on myself and just holding myself back, trying to distract myself with other things mm. and, and never coming to Jesus Christ for it. So, yeah, no, and I, I think that's, and so, but you were, and I guess just to clarify, cause you said it earlier, I believe, but, um, you were a Christian, right? So called, right? In, in your in your twenties, and and but you were a yes. gay Christian, right? Is what you would yes, say. Yes, as as oxymoron as that is. Yes, yeah. I I despised homosexuality, yet mm-hmm. I would submit to it and I would live out the lifestyle. Yet I I would I would hate it. Yeah, and. Wow. Uh, this is where I'm, I'm going to get too much into psychology. So uh, the witness here is going to uh, be, <laughs> be his, his testimony is going to be uh, questioned, but I, I would, there were at some points where the, the, the strife between uh, me hating that, the, that lifestyle and me wanting it got to a point where I, I almost felt like I was going crazy and uh I also would pray to God that this is worse than hell mm. that I would know your existence yet willfully, willfully seek to put you away in order to forward my, my desires. Yeah. And this, and I would, uh, there was one time where I went into a force clearing all by myself, uh, off base. There's a, uh, I, I was stationed at Dong uh, in my first duty station. And, uh, we were 20, uh, two, there were like three or four miles, uh, North, uh, no, four miles distance apart from, uh, the North Korean border. So there was a lot of forests. Oh, wow. And just outside of base, there was a big thick forest. So I, I walked into that forest in my moment of being very disillusioned and I asked the Lord to just kill me right there, just strike mm. me down, because my heart was was so filled with lusts and fleshly desires, and that I my heart despised you, Lord. My Lord, I despise you. So please strike me down so that I don't sin against you any longer. And I was hoping the Lord would just would just do it then. But he he didn't, and and I to my disappointment, to my idiot idiotic disappointment, and so I walked out of the forest uh, after about like a couple hours there, just crying my heart out to him, and there I just I cont- my terrible lifestyle, and uh, yeah. and it was it was that constant strife, so. So yes, I was a homosexual Christian, but my goodness, I, although I, my flesh enjoyed the, the homosexual life, my Christian side did not at all. Mm. And it was in turmoil the entire time. And I, I would say to myself, and I, I would say now that I was not a Christian back then. Yeah. You can, I, you can put that. You identifier knew, you on knew that things. I was a Christian. Right. You knew things. Yeah. You knew you said you Leviticus. You read it, read it when you were 10, that sort of thing. Yeah. But anyways. Yeah. yeah. So so then you would say there's hope, though. Right. There, There's hope that ultimately not just stopping something. But like you said, you didn't run. You didn't go to Christ. You were still trying to do other things, just kind of the slap on the wrist. Um, 
that's that's good. I mean, and that's and that's and that's with any yeah. sin. I mean, and I think sometimes sometimes we, it's front and center, you know, with the whole month and the flag and the this and the that and Hollywood and mainstream media and everything else is just hook, line, and sinker for you know two to seven percent of the population, whatever the actual number is. And it's like that's a little weird if you really step back and think about it. That you know, ninety plus percent of us are supposed to celebrate this small, tiny, tiny oh, minority. And yet yeah. it's like, what, what's really going on here? And really, ultimately, it's just, it's celebrating sin, just like we celebrate, well, the murder of the unborn and other things too, that w- men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. And so, yeah. you know, that sounds harsh in our 2022 ears, even a lot of Christians and go to good churches, it still sounds like, uh, I don't know, but like, but that's what it says. Like, that's what reality is. And, you know, we, we live in this fantasy world and really have for the better part of several decades with, you know, the advent of social media and even I think just Hollywood and film and a lot of just fake stuff that we see and we believe it. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's good, brother. Um, the, what was the other thing I was going to ask you? Uh, just to add to God's yeah. sovereignty. <laughs> it, this all this all uh, i forget the uh, i think i have it here um where the lord base jesus basically describes the holy spirit like uh wind like we don't we can't perceive where the wind comes from mm-hmm. yet yet the wind we, we can feel the direction or where the direction of the wind is going uh but that's how the holy spirit is how sovereign it is and and I need to say that I think I'm I'm very blessed, and uh, I don't know if it's, is it Jesus Christ that chooses who he will have compassion on. I mean, what if what if I can uh, I never did could or never could have that experience with the Holy Spirit in October. What if I was always going to be that John Luke that was had a homosexual life and uh, uh, a Christian belief that were constantly fighting each other? Mm-hmm. What if that continued on to, to the end, to the end of my life? Uh, it's just I I sh- to think about that, but I also think at how at mercy we are to jesus christ to to show compassion on us Mm -hmm. uh do you disagree with that or well i mean you're talking about like the multiverse no i'm just kidding um (laughs) (laughs) but yeah i mean and 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 that really does i mean sometimes we do and it's good to ponder those things like well what what if or can be good i guess um but then we have to fall back on we're not omniscient right we're we're not uh we're not god and ultimately you know, even reading from Romans earlier or other places where, you know, election and choosing and this and that. But sometimes we get too metaphysical, I guess might might not be the best word, but and think what if, what if, what if. But we forget we're here. We're stuck in this space, this time, born at this time with these parents at this place. And we have the experiences we have. We don't have we're not in the middle of Africa or Southeast Asia. We're not we were not living 500 years ago or whatever. We're living now. And so, you know, it's not in the Bible, but God, we meet you where you are, not where you should be. I know I said that earlier, but having that yeah, sure. and, and ultimately knowing and just resting. Yeah. In God's sovereignty in the sense that you know he is king he does whatever he pleases that's what sovereignty ultimately means it's just he does what he wants he saves who he wants and uh you know i mean we look at israel and they were saved physically but there weren't not everybody's israel who's israel you know there has to be this contingent of raise the white flag and put your faith in christ um with one with mouth believes and confesses and is saved and yeah, I mean, it's it's sometimes it's interesting to think, well, what if I didn't meet her? What if I didn't go to that school? What if I didn't move? What if I didn't do this? What if I didn't True. do that? Uh, yeah. You know, if we didn't live in this house and, you know, would we have had these children or would we have, you know, had 
these other children at these other times. I mean, it goes on and on and on. So, you know, it, it can be, I guess, maybe fun uh, to ponder, but at the same time, resting in, in God's sure word and not our own feelings uh, or our own speculations. Is, that's that's why we need the word. That's why we need his sure and steadfast anchor of the soul that is Christ, that is revealed through the spirit uh, in in his uh, in his glorious word. So, yeah. yeah. That's good, brother. You yeah. got anything else you want to you want to add? Any encouragement uh, for for the listener? Hey, I do hope that I am uh, my words or the words of God or uh, that this video basically uh, allows for any homosexual Christian as oxymoron as that is to hopefully find faith in that. And that I hope that I do run into uh, from under your field, uh, a person who is conflicting with his uh, homosexual feelings yet wants to abide in the word of God because so many times uh, just like that uh, progressive uh, pastor as well as his wife of wanting to meld God in a shape that is pleading to them mm. to say that, you know, the word God is, is fallible. And so we should make it up how we see fit that they take the word of God, that that homosexual that we're reaching out takes the word of God uh, completely and doesn't fall for that stupid trope that so many other homosexual Christians are falling for is that, oh, Christ will accept me because he loves everyone. Mm. And he loves, his love is so great and his mercy is so great that he'll take me for my sinful behavior as well as my sinful lifestyle that I don't want to give up. So I hope that we reach that kind of, uh, that kind of, uh, consensus for lack of a better word or better standing for the, the, the homosexual viewer is to accept the Lord and all his word and to know yeah. that he, we need to give up the homosexual life in order to be saved in order to have eternal life with our Lord and savior in heaven. So mm. that's, that's all yeah. I have to say. No, that's, and that's true. I mean, it, it's easy to refute, their argument when you put in well i'm a coveting christian i'm an adulterer christian or i'm a this christian or i'm a, I'm a thieving christian or i'm a lying christian i mean all liars will have their place in the lake of fire in revelation 20 i mean like there's it's it's pretty and, and again it's never a well we're talking about not sinning anymore um it's a abiding in christ and walking in him and when you do sin you, you see the sinfulness of your sin and even if it's first grade level, you still understand, man, uh, yeah, you're right, Lord, forgive me and, and wash me anew and walk with me and, and not not defending it. And, and that's with any sin. I mean, pride again, again, with gay pride now, it's just pride. But that's that's the chief sin. And it's it's ironic and sad that that's now being celebrated. And it's like, don't you understand like this, this has nothing to do yeah. with like, Oh, that's gross. Two dudes or two women or whatever. Or like the, that is not even what we're talking about. Oh, you're just homophobic. Oh, you're just, no, I'm not scared of you. I feel sorry for you because you're living yes. in your sin the same way as anyone else. Who's a prideful jerk who beats his wife or a woman who subverts her husband authority and spends all his money and lies about it or children who disobey their parents. I mean, they're, there's multiple lists, and one of the lists, I mean, in Romans 1 is disobedient to parents. Huh? Disobedient to parents? Why aren't there any, like, parades about that? You know, like, it's just on and on. I, anyway, it's, we could go two hours probably, but uh, I appreciate the time, brother. I really That's do. True. And, and yeah. you know, let's continue to talk, and maybe we'll, maybe we'll do this another time as well. But I'm sure this is very helpful for many. Um, and that's it it's it's been a pleasure yep. and you have a good rest of your night all right you as well take care right, pastor see ya bye-bye